Thank you very much for the invitation uh, and for the introduction. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, so before I begin, I feel obliged to remind everyone that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is continuing. And I think it's important that we stay aware of the um, atrocities that Russian army is committing. And I'd like to encourage everyone to be on the lookout for opportunities to help Ukrainian people. So um, what I'm going to talk about is revolving around the following notion. Uh, so let me start by stating it in the maximal generality. So let's say that T is any scheme. And I'll fix a prime number, uh, which will be invertible on, on that scheme. Uh, so here is the central definition. So I'll say that a QP local system Um, L on uh, the scheme T, well, in the etal local, uh, in the sense of uh, an etal local system, is of geometric origin. Um, if uh, it comes from the relative cohomology of a family of varieties, and the precise notion is that. Um, I'll allow to myself to restrict to a dense open uh, such that there exists a smooth proper family over that dense open. Um, such that the restriction of L to U is a subquotient of the cohomology local system of that family in some degree, and possibly uh, twisted by some power of a psychotomic character. And I'm including this twist uh, to make this um, class of local systems uh, stable under duality. So that J, that J might be positive. Okay. So kind of the central question, which I'm personally very interested in, is the, the question of classification of all local systems of geometric origin. And this somehow is the most, I guess, mo most studied in the particular case where um, T is just a point, it's the spectrum of a number field. So let's say that F is some finite extension of T. So then there is a precise expectation for, uh, yeah, so for what, local, what, for what are the local systems coming from geometry? And uh, here, well, local systems on that scheme are just representations of the goal algorithm. And my notation for the Gala group will be GF. Um, so the expectation is the Fontaine Maser conjecture. I'll call it conjecture A because there will be a, a complementary conjecture. So just for simplicity, let me, let me restrict to the irreducible case. So. Um, an irreducible representation of the Galois group on a QP vector space um, is of geometric origin. If and only if uh, the two conditions are satisfied. First one is that um, uh, V is almost everywhere unified. So at almost every place of F, uh, the inertia subgroup acts trivially. And the second one is the condition at P, where P is this prime, is that um, for every place above P, um, the restriction to the decomposition group at that place is a drum representation. Um, so these conditions are necessary if um, uh, your V appears as a subquotient of the cohomology of the variety. So the only if direction is, is, is known, and the challenge is to prove the converse. Um, so uh, my you know, first main point will be to contrast this conjecture with what happens if I look at a slightly different 
uh, example of, of a T. So let me rather look at the following example of, of another T. So let's say that I start with some smooth variety over that number field. And let's say that as, as my scheme T, I'll take the base change of S to F bar. So it's a variety of an algebraically closed field. Well, in that case, um, local systems is a purely topological notion, right? So local systems on S F bar are just the same as, well, if I were to fix a base point, and let me just for simplicity of what will come after, I assume that my base point is defined over F. Local systems are the same as representations of the fundamental group of uh, y1 et al of S of bar, which since this is a um, scheme over an algebraically closed in field in characteristic zero, uh, this is the same as the profinite completion of the topological fundamental group if I were to choose an embedding of my base field into C. Okay, so this is a purely topological notion. Well, I'm looking at continuous representation. And the question is, uh, so can I characterize local systems of geometric origin on that variety? Um, so um, I'd like to state the following conjecture. And one of the main points of my talk will, will be to try to advocate for this conjecture. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure who to attribute it to. Uh, I think defi definitely Daniel Litt has believed in this conjecture for, for a while. Um, so conjecture is that uh, a semi-simple local system L on S of bar is of geometric origin. Uh, if and only if L extends to a local system uh, on S itself will possibly extend it to some finite extension of F. So for some finite extension F prime over F. Okay? So the um, forward direction is, is quite clear. If your local system on this variety of an algebraic closed field came from geometry, then the family which gave rise to it can be descended to some finite extension, and therefore it all cohomology reduces for you such a descent. And what, what this conjecture is claiming is that the converse is true. If you started with some local system and you've managed to extend it to the arithmetic fundamental group um, over some f prime, then your local system should come from geometry. So um, you might notice um, kind of a jarring discrepancy between these two conjectures, and it seems that I, I, sh I'm, I should be obliged to kind of add here that this extension to f prime should at least satisfy the assumptions of the fontaine maser conjecture for this conjecture B to be, to at least have a chance uh, at being true. But one of the main points which I want to make is that this is not necessary. And uh, because of that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to say a little more, I think that conjecture B might be more accessible than conjecture A. So the main result which, um, um, uh, oh, which please, yeah. Just a very small question. Please. So in your, in your uh, definition of uh, geometric origin, you work with local system of a given way because uh, you have certain i and j, not direct sum for different i and j. So of course the way it disappears when you pass that as something, uh, you cannot define it over a algebraic closure. But still, because you start from something which is uh, like uh, something which appears in, uh, in even cohomology and then something which appears in odd cohomology. Sure, sure, uh, okay. What happens, and then this is semi-simple. Okay, okay, Th thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I think this should be better. Thank you, yes, yes. Yes, this is a very good. Great. Um, right, so yeah, what, what, what will be the, what will contribute to the evidence for this conjecture, which at least now hopefully not obviously false? Well, so 
the first theorem um, is as follows. So this will be a purely local result. I'll work over a periodic field. So let's say that k is a finite extension of QP, and x over k is a sweep variety. Um, so let me uh, kind of state two points, which will sort of hopefully will make this a little more understandable. Uh, so if you have a local system L on X, uh, which is a QP bar local system, it's, it's somewhat important here to work with algebraically close coefficients. Um, such that, uh, well, now this is living over X, right? So I'm, it's a representation of the arithmetic fundamental grid. Such that if I restrict it to a local system on the um, base change of X to K bar, uh, this becomes irreducible. Uh, then there exists a character of the Galois group of that uh, periodic field such that uh, if I twist this local system by a character, it becomes Durham. In particular, all of its stocks at uh, K points are Durham Galois represented. And note that this twisting um, doesn't change the underlying local system over k bar, right? Because this is just a character of the color. So another way to put this is that if I started doing an arbitrary local system on x, um, then uh, I can find another extension of the corresponding local system over x k bar to x, which is the ROM. Okay? So in that sense, the Durham condition is automatically guaranteed if you choose your extension appropriate. Like, of course, without this twist, it would be false, because um, you can find non-drum characters over, over a point. And let me just complement this with um, a statement which works for not necessarily irreducible local systems, or not necessarily geometrically irreducible ones, which is that um, for any, uh, well, here you can, might as well work with QP local systems, for any QP local system um, L and X, there exists a drum local system M, Uh, such that uh, if you go to k bar, uh, L is contained in M. Can be embedded into M. So with, without this geometric reducibility assumption, uh, it's a slightly weaker statement. And let me just remark that I don't know if... if we can always achieve uh, the situation where this map is an isomorphism in general. If you can literally just change the extension of a given local system to x over k. So I think for, for non-semi-simple local systems, there is an obstruction to doing so, which you can write down, but I uh, don't know examples where it's not zero. Particularly, I'll be happy to hear any thoughts. Can um, I ask this much please, more yeah. question? On the previous uh, blackboard, there is still a tiny point which is not so on this uh, for supposedly easy part of the conjecture B. So you say that uh, something, if something is of geometric origin over SF bar, then it extends to a local system on SF prime. Mm -hmm. Now, if it is a stop motion, then uh, uh, how does it descend to something which is uh, still a sub portion in the sense of local system over F prime, because then you have a contribution of the finite gap of the garage of, uh, of uh, the, the, This requires an argument, yeah. Uh, if, if, if you have, um, well, well, yes, so somehow if it's a sub quotient, then I might have to, even if I've managed to descend my family of varieties to F prime, I might have to further extend F prime for that particular sub quotient to be stabilized by the Galois group. And then I might further need to extend it to like go from the character of this representation of the fundamental group being fixed by the Galois group to the actual representation being fixed to kill some element in the Brouwer group. There, there's an argument needed, you're right. But I think this is a true statement. Indeed, it would be, it would be more obvious if my a condition was that L is equal to all of the cohomology. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, any other questions about what I said so far? All right, so the point of this is the corollary 
um, that says that if we again go back to the number field situation, and I'll try to denote schemes over number field by S, and everything that, that's happening locally will be will work will, will happen over some variety X. So if L is uh, well any uh, local system on S, uh, then there exists another local system M such that the geometric monodromy of L embeds into that of M, and um, the stalks of M satisfy the assumptions of the fontaine mazur conjecture. So uh, these conditions one and two. And for every, say, point in a values in a finite extension, uh, the stalk at S uh, satisfies as a, as a representation of the Galois grid of F prime satisfies one and two. Okay. Um, so the, the the reason is that uh, well, the, the the I guess second part of this theorem takes care of the drum condition and the fact that you can always arrange. Uh, for, for, for that uh, larger local system to be almost everywhere unified, this is a quick consequence of the results on the specialization of the fundamental grid. Uh, meaning that the Gallo action is unramified and on the appropriate com uh, completion of the fundamental. Okay? So, um, and this is, well, uh, I think this is an evidence that uh, if you believe the fontaine wieser conjecture, you should as well believe conjecture B, because it tells you that if you have some arbitrary extension of L to S of prime, you can always modify it so that the stocks will be, uh, uh, assuming the fontaine major conjecture will be of geometric origin. Okay? Now, uh, I, think, I think kind of the, the merit of um, looking at the conjecture B separately is that uh, I think it, it's totally plausible that the conjecture B might be proven before conjecture A is proven. Um, and let me just, to put this into context, let me um, remind you what we already know about conjecture B. Um, so let me get another board. Uh, sounds good, yeah. Please, yeah. No, no, no that, that's the point, it's not Galway covariant. If it was, then I think, well, L would be forced to be the ROM if, if it was a sub-local system. That's the point. Right? Exactly. Um, uh, yeah, so, so, so let me say what it's known about, uh, about conjecture B. Uh, so just to kind of as a warm-up, let me say what happens in rank one. So if your local system is a Frank 1, you can prove that uh, L extends to SF prime for some F prime, if and only if L has finite monodromy. So it's a character of finite order. And the reason for that is way conjectures. Uh, well, indeed, if you have um, a representation of the um, uh, fundamental group over F bar into, say, QP cross, which happened to extend to a representation of the fundamental group to the arithmetic fundamental group, then, well, since this is an abelian group, it moreover factors for the abelianization of that group. But this is the semi direct product of the Gala group and the um, fundamental group over the algebraic closure abelianized. But it means that if I look at the abelianization, it will be the abelianization of the Galois group. Um, and the product of the abelianization of the topological fundamental group, or I guess geometric fundamental group, but also quotiented by the action of GF. So I'm taking co-invariance of GF. And now, because the action of the Galois group on the first cohomology uh, well, the action of Frobenius elements has weights which are, has eigenvalues which are di different from one. This is a finite group. So it means that the homomorphism from that group, 
factor through a finite group if I have this condition about being descendable to SF prime. Uh, so you see that the rank one case um, is true, and it follows from a, from a kind of piece of characteristic P geometry. And I think it's kind of, it might be instructive to com compare this with the conjecture A, where rank one case is also known, but it's a completely different part of number theory. It's, it's a consequence of, of class field theory. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I guess maybe a more serious um, um, evidence towards conjecture B is that the analog of conjecture B is, is true and it's known uh, if you replace F by a finite field. And if you assume that S is a curve. And this is a consequence of the Langlands correspondence, or I guess the proof of the Langlands correspondence uh, over uh, function fields in characteristic P. So this is the work of Drenfeld and Lafork. Because what they prove is that if you have a local system, say an irreducible local system uh, over a curve or, uh, on a curve of a finite field whose determinant is finite, then they find uh, that local system in the cohomology uh, of, of a Stuka space. In particular, it comes from geometry. Right? And there, there is some progress towards conjecture B, say in the rank two case, due to Snowden and Zimmerman, which relies on these results in characteristic B, and which proceeds by sort of lifting this from characteristic B to characteristic zero. But I think in general, it's not so clear how, if, how helpful this result uh, when applied to the number field case. Um, right? Yeah. So this is some, right. So this is some another. Uh, I think this is the um, status of the conjecture. Uh, so my main goal today will be to um, sketch a brief of at least first part of theorem one. But before I do so, let me put it into context um, by uh, restating it slightly. So I think I'll, I'll erase the fantine maser conjecture. And please do ask any questions if something comes up. Please. The yeah. Um, that's a great question. In general, as stated, this is false. For instance, if you took a Tate elliptic curve, uh, then I think there is a rank one local system with infinite monodromy. I'm saying that there are all ones which extend to the arithmetic fundamental group and still have infinite monodromy. Because um, I think for a Tate elliptic yeah, curve. I agree that. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Right, but, but I think uh, if, if you. It should be. Uh, um, the, the ones which come from geometry, you mean? Or. Uh, I think the, the ones which come from geometry should still be uh, those which have finite monodromy. Because for a periodic field, you can still apply Hodge theory if you choose an embedding of QP into C. For instance, the existence of a polarized integral hot structure forces anything of rank one to be of finite monodromy. Yeah, yeah. For rank one, in the rank one case, everything is fairly explicit. It just uh, comes down to the action of the Galois group on first cohomology. This is the. But yeah, it's a, it's a good point. So somehow, the analog of conjecture B over local fields, it's uh, it's definitely false. So the local Galois group is not enough in general. There could be some versions where you um, maybe additionally assume that you're a crystalline, but I don't want to say anything per se. Okay. Um, right. So you see that somehow um, in theorem one, um, I was trying to kind of suppose the primary object is a local system over xk bar. And I was really, really choosing uh, an extension of it to x over k. And there is a very convenient. Um, Kind of machinery for working with that, which was suggest, which I, I learned of it uh, from Sasha Bellinson, and it, it somehow it, uh, it basically uses its Anakian perspective, and I think it's quite helpful for thinking about these questions. So I said that the fact that in corollary one, the almost everywhere ramified in this condition uh, can be satisfied as a consequence of the properties of the Galois action on the fundamental group, and 
it is natural to kind of ask whether Theorem 1 has some reflection in terms of the action of the Gala group on the fundamental group. And well, it does, well, in a sense, in a tautological way. So let me set this up. Um, so uh, I'll need one particular notion that is of the pro-algebraic completion. So if you have any group gamma, which might also carry a topology, so let's say a topological group, uh, then I'll denote by gamma for algebraic um, an affine group scheme over QP, which is characterized by the following universal property, such that there is a map from the group gamma to the QP points of that uh, group scheme, uh, which is, uh, well, continuous, uh, such that whenever you have a representation of gamma into a linear algebraic group, so I might as well assume that it goes to some GLN, well, which is continuous. So for every continuous representation of rho, uh, there exists an unique homomorphism of group schemes from gamma pro algebraic to the um, corresponding algebraic group, uh, such that if I take the, um, if I restrict your algebraic to QP points, the diagram will be commutative. So basically it's a group scheme which, which completely captures the representation theory of, of gamma. But it forgets everything about kind of the part of gamma which is not visible uh, under linear representations. Or in other words, uh, like if you prefer the Tanakian perspective, this gamma pro algebraic is the Tanakian fundamental group of the category of linear re of continuous representations of gamma. Okay? And I'll apply this construction to the fundamental group. So let me just for brevity denote by pi1 pro alg. Uh, so let me just state this in the local setup. The pro algebraic completion of the tall fundamental group. Now, well, if my x is a rational point, uh, then this has an action of the Galois group, and just by functionality, this group scheme gets an action of the Galois group. And you can restate um, theorem one as follows. So let me frame this as a corollary. Um, the first one is that the first part is that um, the section is Durham in the appropriate sense. Um, so what, what exactly do I mean by this? Well. This is an affine group scheme, so it's completely captured by its ring of functions. And you can phrase this as saying that for any finite dimensional sub-representation of that ring of functions, um, uh, which is being acted on by the dollar group, so this is finite dimensional, this is a Durham representation. Um, yeah, that's what I want. Well, in particular, if you have anything which is a quotient of a finite dimensional sub-representation, uh, I'll also know that it's wrong. But I don't know anything about weird finite dimensional sub-quotients which are quotients of an infinite dimensional sub-representation. I don't know, if, I don't even know if those exist. Yeah. Right. So, 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 I'm saying that some of this, the Gull action here actually might not be locally finite and it's almost never is, uh, but I'm saying that uh, the Drumner's property holds for the union of finite dimensional sub Okay. Um, and well, in the global case, uh, I can just say that if I, I had a variety S over smooth variety F, smooth variety S over a number of field F, then for any finite dimensional sub representation of the um, ring of functions on the pro algebraic fundamental group. There isn't, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, this, uh, this A corresponds to part B in theorem one. Um, and this is almost, almost it's, it's quite straightforward to go from B to A. Well, I, I might, I'm not sure if I'll have time to say this, but it, it doesn't require any additional. Uh, yeah, so I can just complement this with um, a statement about uh, the action of the global Galois group. So any such finite dimensional V which is stable under the Galois group, uh, satisfies the assumptions of the fontaine maser conjecture. 
assumptions of the continuous region. Okay. So in this way, you can view these functions on the algebraic fundamental group as a source of representations against which to test the fontaine maser conjecture. Of course, I'm sort of cheating slightly because it's not so easy to come up with explicit examples here. Uh, because, um, well, this is, well, right, because we don't, that's the system how if you choose, probably if you choose a random vector here, most likely its Galois orbit will be infinite dimension. Uh, but it's sort of, it's an interesting but a somewhat separate topic of coming up with representation which is related to kind of coming up with test objects for conjecture B. Um, all right. And so, yeah, I don't want to say much about how this uh, curl refollows, but let me just assert that this really doesn't require any additional work. Uh, basically, you use that functions here uh, can be thought of as matrix coefficients of representations, which correspond to locals. Um, all right. Um, now, well, maybe just to uh, put this into context a bit more, um, let me compare this to something which is probably more familiar. Um, so, um, uh, corollary two is quite well known. So, mark for, and again, I'm sorry, I don't quite know what the precise um, references, it's, it's probably somehow implicitly contained in Deline's uh, text about P1 minus 3 points. Uh, for the pro unipotent completion instead of the pro algebraic completion. And the reason is sort of the best possible one, which is that you can rewrite the space. Yeah, so, so pro unipotent completion is just something which where uh, it's defined by the same universal property, but I'm only ranging over uh, representations uh, which factor through strictly hypertriangular matrices. So those which are extensions of um, trivial representation. Because this is essentially tau homology of a scheme. This is the zero of a tau homology of a certain cos simplicial scheme, uh, which I suggestively denote uh, as, the, as the loop space. So somehow, um, whatever proof of the fact that the Galois action on the Italic homology is Durham, uh, you, you, you prefer, it should carry over to cosimplicial schemes. So in a sense, uh, kind of this space basically comes from geometry in, my, in the sense I stated above, except that, well, here the interesting part of the action is the non-semi-simple part. But yeah, I just want to mention this to highlight that uh, the proof of corollary two, which, which I have, which goes through theorem one, is really not of this form. I, it would be very nice to kind of explain explicitly how this um, functions of the pro-algebraic completion related to the tau homology of some variety, but that would basically constitute proving conjecture B. So really the proof will go through some abstract p court theorem. Right? So uh, having said that, this is kind of a source of representations which satisfy the assumptions of the fontaine maser conjecture. It might be kind of curious to ask how rich this source is. Um, and um, yeah, so, so, so let me state a theorem, which uh, maybe I'll, I'll get a chance to say a few words about the brief of. Um, so basically it says that the source is as rich as it could be. So, uh, if you take any representation of geometric origin, so every, oh, well, let me assume semi-simplicity, semi-simple uh, representation of the Galois group of the number field uh, of geometric origin, uh, is a subquotient of the space of functions on the algebraic fundamental group of one particular variety. Uh, and this variety is uh, just a projective line with three punctures. And um, I have to work with a tangential base point, but this is uh, all largely an artifact of the brief. So this is a tangential base point. Okay, 
So it can be proven that if you take anything which appears in the cohomology of some variety, you can then find it as a subquotient in, in, this, in this space wall compatible with the Galois action. Okay. Um, and this is sort of, I guess, maybe an indirect um, indication that these algebraic completions, they usually be quite wild uh, as soon as your group kind of is, um, has enough representation. So here, the group in question is just the profile and completion of the free group into generators. And so in particular, well, it's algebraic completion is something huge. Um, all right. So um, are there any questions about it? Uh, this is a number field. Yeah, this is crucial. Sorry. So F is a number field. Yeah, the proof relies on Bailey's theorem, so it's, it crucially uses a number field. Yeah, thank you. So I'll try to stick to the convention that F is a number field and K is a PA. Um, Right. Uh, so before I move to um, saying a few words about the proof of theorem one, let me just um, collect these results together. Uh, that is of corollary two and theorem two. Um, so somehow I, I've mentioned three classes of Galois representations. Uh, we had representations of geometric origin. And uh, theorem 2 says that any such representation, uh, so let me assume some simplicity from the beginning, is a subquotient of, the, of this huge vector space with an action of the Galois group. And uh, somehow I didn't state this in theorem two, but in fact you can print it as a subquotient of the Galois finite part. There's a part where uh, every vector has a finite dimensional orbit. So, and again, well, surely semi-simple subquotients. And now uh, corollary two uh, says that every such sub-representation, such, such subquotient, Satisfies the assumptions of the Fontaine Maser contract. So, semi simple representations satisfying the assumptions of the Fontaine Maser of the. Okay, so uh, this is corollary two, uh, this is theorem two. But of course, if we believe the fontaine Maser conjecture, we do believe that this class is just equal to that class. So both of those uh, inclusions should be equalities. Um, so yeah, let me just put it in the board. Inclusions are equalities. But I don't quite know how to prove either of those things. So, uh, proving that uh, uh, proving that this is equality is uh, intimately related to proving conjecture B, and well, this is something else. Right. So I, I don't. I, maybe I should apologize for 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 drawing this cartoon. I don't know. I don't know if this is immensely helpful for approaching fontaine maser conjecture, but I just found it curious. Right. Um, so let me move to piatti koch theory, and I'll. I'll Sketch a proof of theorem one. But are there any questions? Okay, great. So, um, and I'll, 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 I'll concentrate on the first part of theorem one. So, suppose you start with an arbitrary local system on a variety of repeatic fields. Uh, and well, I know it's um, geometrically reducible, and I'm trying to find this character such that the twist will be Durham. Uh, but yeah, well, Durham by definition is the fact that applying a certain functor gives you a large enough object. But well, what, what do you do if you start an arbitrary representation? It would be very useful if there was uh, some sort of um, invariant or, um, I don't know, well, invariant attached to all local systems, which would remember enough information 
So then the drum property could be read off this invariant. Unfortunately, there is such a thing. So the key input uh, into theorem one is the piadic Riemann Hilbert correspondence, or I should say, a piadic Riemann Hilbert correspondence. Yes. So this is a combination of works of many people. Um, let me just uh, mention, well, the particular version which I'm going to, to use, it's sort of due to uh, Diao, Lan, Li, Onju. Uh, but it um, sort of rests on the, some of the previous work of Schulze. And uh, well, somehow the, um, the, the, the way of, 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 of stating it uh, in the case of a point, which if I understand correctly, was invented by Van Morfenton. And in particular, I also need a decompleted version, which is due to Koji Shimizu. But again, I'm, this is definitely not kind of a complete list of, of people who contributed to these ideas. Um, right, so here is the statement. And uh, this will also be an opportunity to remind you uh, what a drum local system is. So um, my setup is that I have a finite extension of QP, and I have a smooth variety over it. And I'll try, this will be a functor from QP local systems on X without any further conditions. And it will go to certain, uh, to a certain category of drum flavor. It will be some modules with connection. And the field of coefficients there will be an extension of K uh, obtained uh, by adjoining all P power roots of unity. Okay, but I'm not completing it, so it's an infinite algebraic extent. So the target category of the function, which I'll call RH plus, and it will be in a second clear what plus stands for, uh, is the category of uh, vector bundles on the base change of this variety to k infinity, uh, where I additionally adjoin another formal variable. So you can think of it as a kind of formal scheme, which is a trivial formal one-dimensional thinking of xk infinity. And let me introduce um, a letter for, for this vector bundle, uh, which are equipped with a connection. So with um, k infinity linear flat connection. Um, which is allowed to have poles along t equal to zero of order at most one. So this is a nabla is a map from E to E tensor uh, differential forms with possibly uh, a logarithmic pole. So this is the kind of object which you get. And let me just um, introduce some notation for this category, which is kind of made up. Uh, but it's vector bundles on xk infinity adjoint T. Uh, with a logarithmic connection. So noted by Nabla law. Right, and the crucial point is that this function is faithful. So it uses injection on morphism. And it's also monoid. So for instance, uh, it preserves ranks of objects. So a local system of a given rank is being carried to a vector bundle of the same rank. Right? So how is that related to uh, drawn local systems? So you can recover the result of applying d to that to, to a local system from RH plus or up to a, a slight uh, uh, a slight emission. So there is a function from here to just vector bundles on x k infinity. So now without this additional thickening, which sends e to the following. So you can invert T. So then you're getting something over the Laurent series in T. So in particular, this is just a genuine connection because uh, the poles don't matter anymore. And you should take the flat sections with respect to the, uh, uh, to the derivative in this T direction. So you're going to get a sheaf on X, K, and T. Okay? And this functor is not faithful anymore because there might be vector bundles which um, well, such that the connection on this formal puncture disk is non-trivial enough, so it doesn't have enough flat section. And this composite functor is the functor Diderom, well, but with scalars extended to K. Okay. 
and well, if you'd like, you can take this as a definition of DDRAM. Um, so let me say a couple of things about the properties here. So, uh, please. No, no, it's not completed. Yeah. Uh, somehow it's, yeah. um, it's basically um, this k infinity of t is the decompletion of uh, beta ram applied to the completion of that that field, which is a perfectoid. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is the called distribution. Uh, that's in, 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 in Gorgi's paper. And like you need to do a little bit of work to, to make this global. He did it locally, but substantially this is Gorgi's. Uh, so, so this is uh, differential forms on this formal scheme, including uh, differential forms in the t direction. But I'm also allowing poles of order 1 in t. So this is a 1 over t. So let me try to write this more legibly. So you allow to divide by t only, only differentiation in the t direction or also differentiation in the other direction? Um, well, in, in fact, it, it lands in the category where only divide by t the differentiation in the t direction, but I might as well state it like that. Yeah, but it's true that you actually land in a category where only along. In the horizontal direction, you have poles. That's a good point. Thank you. A any other questions? When I take bracket, I might have to divide by t squared. Uh, true, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, maybe just to, to make this less confusing, I should, should do this, but, but I think anyway, RH plus lands in the subcategory with only poles. I think this is a legitimate notion, but maybe not the very useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. A a any other questions? Okay, great. Yeah, so, so, so let me say something about uh, this. Uh, uh, these functors. So, um, depending on how you prefer to think about well, various functors in PID code theory, it might be useful to um, uh, indicate where the send operator here is. So, if you take t and multiply it by the derivation in the t direction, then this will be the, what's in some other approach, well, what's sometimes called send operator. Mm -hmm. Well, again, or maybe in this setting, I should rather call it Fontan send operator. Uh, sure, well, it depends on where it's actual. Okay. If, you, if you want to act on, on hot state cohomology, it will be more t. But I, th I think, it, didn't Fontana also have like a version over, over the series in t in his paper about arithmetic of piadic representation? Okay, okay, my bad. Okay, okay. all right. Thank you, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so this is just to compare it. So, so let me uh, tell you what this functor does uh, in a very simple case, because it will be somewhat important for later. So if you just have a point, then um, suppose you have, the, then your, your, your um, local systems are just representations of the Galois group. So suppose that your representation is a power of this economic character, uh, where A, say, is some piadic number, well, such that it makes sense to raise this economic character to that power. Then, um, Rh plus of this character is equal to, uh, well, it's a rank one module, so it's k infinity of t, where the connection is, uh, well, the drum differential plus uh, dt over t multiplied by a. Okay. Now, in general, so in general, Uh, your local system is Durham. Well, by definition, L is Durham. If and only if the result of applying the Durham functor is a vector bundle of the correct rank. Uh, 
which in terms of this functor rh plus amounts uh, to the invariance under the connection or rather flat sections on the puncture disk to being of the correct rank. So rank of this uh, over uh, xk infinity to be the same as the rank of a local system. Okay. And you see that here this condition will be satisfied for this connection if and only if a is an integer. Right, because that's when this connection will be algebraically trivial if you invert t. And which is, is consistent with the fact that uh, this thing is, is drawn if and only if a is an integer. Okay. And let me introduce some notation for this, which I'll use later. I'll call it O of a. So it's a rank one module with this connection. This I'll call not blank. So this is uh, an example of how this works. Okay, so let me, uh, now having set this up, uh, the first part of the theorem follows by an essentially linear algebraic computation. Um, yeah. The Riemann-Hilbert, is it a, a, an algebraic variety or is it an elliptic variety? Uh, here, this is for an algebraic variety, yeah. Uh, I'm, somehow, uh, it, it could be true that, as stated, this is also true for arbitrary rigid analytic varieties, though so, so, somehow the proof of a certain decompletion result, which I have, uses quasi-compactness. Uh, so so, so I, I use a compactification and use a quasi-compactness of that compactification. But this, may, maybe it's possible to remove. But uh, the, the theorem itself crucially, uh, it crucially uses the fact that you're an algebraic variety in that it admits um, a compactification in that it's a risky dance in something proper. It's also true for smooth rigid analytic varieties, which admit such a complication, but uh, even though I don't have a counterexample, the proof definitely doesn't work, say, for affinoid variety. Uh, the Erman Herbert correspondence might, might hold for a, a larger class of variety. Yeah, and by, by the way, I state, as I stated, everything here is in, algebra, in, in, an algebraic, in the algebraic category, so it does take some work uh, did by Diaolan, Liu, and Zhu to ensure that to, to kind of put an algebraic structure on the value of this Roman Hilbert. Uh, okay, so yeah, the brief. Mm. Yeah, let's do it here. That thing go to. Um, yeah, so, so suppose I start, oh, let me just, to make things a little simpler, let me assume that my L is a QP local system. Uh, such that if I extend the scalars to QP bar, it, uh, it stays, its uh, geometric, underlying geometric local system stays irreducible. Such that L uh, base change to extend scalars to keep bar over when restricted to the geometric fundamental group is irreducible. And I'm looking to find a, a character such that L tensor chi is the wrong. Um, so, uh, yeah. So the question is how can I possibly use this, this irreducibility property? So this functor Rh plus is definitely not an equivalence, so it's not quite true that irre well, um, at least it's not quite obvious that the geometric irreducible objects go to objects with some kind of irreducibility. And anyway, this is kind of this is irreducibility over k bar, not over. K. But uh, you, you still uh, you can say more about this functor, uh, which is which I'll state as the following comparison theorem. And you should think of it as a periodic comparison theorem because that's exactly what it is. But it's, it's like a very special case. Of it. So for any L, what's true is that the endomorphisms of L over x k bar, um, well, the dimension of that is equal to the dimension um, over k infinity of t of the space of endomorphisms of the corresponding bundle, uh, which are, uh, I'll write it and I'll explain what this means, which are x k infinity flat. So uh, it will mean that they're flat in the uh, direction of x. So 
uh, this is not a condition on T. So by definition, this is the algebra if endomorphisms. Uh, which commute with all the local uh, all the local derivations in the x direction. So f commutes with nabla v uh, for any uh, v uh, which is the local section of the tangent sheave to x. Okay. Uh, so this is still a module over k infinity double rockets. Uh, and well, this is really uh, a PID comparison theorem. You should think of this as of drum cohomology because it's some flat sections. And this is zero of it all cohomology. And there are versions of that for, for higher degrees. Okay. But now if I know that my uh, L is absolutely irreducible, I do know that this space is one dimensional right? by the Schur's lemma. So this dimension is one. But now it, it implies that this object RH plus of L should have no non-scalar endomorphisms which are xk infinity flat. So, in other words, this Rh plus of L is sure irreducible. So it implies that Rh plus of L, so it's, uh, it's kx infinity flat endomorphisms, uh, are only scalars. Uh, sorry. So now I've got an object of this category uh, such that uh, it has no non-scalar endomorphism. But now all that remains is a purely algebraic uh, analysis of objects of that category. So starting from this point, you can forget, essentially forget about the Galois group. So it's a lemma which you can prove um, that if you have an object E in the category of vector bundles with a flat connection over xk infinity, Laurent series T, so where I'm, I'm inverting T in that definition, uh, such that it has no non scale. So, so here, connection really means genuine connection, since I've inverted T and not allowing any, any further poles. So, such that um, endomorphisms of E, which are xk infinity flat, uh, are only scalars. Uh, has the form. a tensor product uh, of a vector bundle E on xk infinity without the T. And one of those O of A's. Uh, so here E is a vector bundle with connection, with a flat connection on xk infinity. And well, O of A for some A in k infinity is uh, just a one-dimensional module with the connection given by uh, the same formula. Okay. So what's the reason for that? Well, um, where are vector bundles with a flat connection on, on, on this? Well, you can think of this topologically as of a trivial circle bundle on xk infinity. So its fundamental group is the product of the fundamental group of xk infinity and the fundamental group of the circle. So essentially, if you just um, say the same words in the drum setting, uh, this is, comes down to separately studying vector bundles on xk infinity and vector bundles on the formal puncture disk. But it's easy to classify all of them. Uh, and you can prove that somehow the only uh, objects which, so, so, so there are higher rank and decomposable objects, but they will all have non-trivial endomorphisms. So uh, if you don't have uh, non-trivial endomorphisms, you're forced to be a product of this with a rank one object. But now we win because by definition, by, by setup, we're allowed to twist away anything of rank one. So this will be the last thing I'll say. So I'm going here. So I can find, uh, so if I can find a character such that Rh plus of that character is O of minus A, uh, well, it requires a little bit more work of analyzing, that, of proving that A actually lies in K, but let me kind of sweep this under the rug. Then uh, L, Tensor chi will be drawn because the result of applying this Rh plus functor will be just a vector bundle pulled back from xk infinity. And so we win because that's what the theorem uh, aimed to predict. Okay, so let me stop.
Thank you. Thank you for this enlightening lecture. Uh, lecture. So, any question in, in the room? Yeah. Oh, so, uh, my question is quite simple. So, uh, if I under, understand correctly, the, the corresponding drum representation has a, a trivial host state number? I mean, uh, uh, trivial host, host state numbers are all zero? Or? Uh, sorry, for this L? Yeah, as this construction. No, 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 not necessarily. Well, uh, well maybe, th this yeah, might have like some, some sequence of host state numbers. But uh, in your construction, so, uh, no local oh, holes along T. That's here. a great question. I've invoked a T, oh, I and the host state weights are the data of host state weights is contained in the choice of a lattice. Uh -huh. I see. I see. Yeah, that's a very good question. I've... Uh, just a naive question. Do you think something like several one happens for crossing representation? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, somehow that that would be contingent on um, proving some kind of global version of the uh, potential of drum implying potentially semi-stable. Um, also, maybe a related thing is that there is a recent result of, um, uh, I think, Elena Noy and Mikhail Groshning, where they proved that every, anything rigid is crystalline. So, an indication that something like that should be true. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought about this for, for, for a bit, but I, I, uh, it feels like it should be true, but, but I, don't, I don't have a brief. I mean, you should have some assumptions that maybe you're, you have good reduction, for instance. That's a good question. Other questions? Who is ah, sorry. Uh, well, I have a question about the piadic Riemann Hilbert correspondence. Please, yeah. So so in your statement, the IH plus functor is only faithful. And uh, is there any uh, natural condition on the vector bundle set you can add so that the IH plus is also a uh, full on the sub onto the subcategory? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, it's not going to be something tautological because um I'm kind of I'm forgetting a lot of structure. I'm forgetting that there should actually be a Frobenius on that bundle coming from, well, um, right, right, if I were to kind of enhance this some kind of decrease. There definitely should be like a very non-trivial subcategory. Because, well, uh, somehow, right, here, uh, what, what I have on the, tar on the, on the source, uh, like if you think about all space of uh, representations of the geometric fundamental group, there I'm only picking uh, local systems which extend to a finite extension of QP. It's something very sparse. Whereas on the right, I think like objects on the right probably has have like positive dimensional moduli. Um, so yeah, it should be something very non-trivial. But I, I don't have anything non. I don't have anything to say really about. Okay, so. I'm here. Uh, it, it's, it's important, it's perfectoid, and well, if you were to choose another extension, instead of the sen operator, you would sort of have more data. So this sen operator corresponds to the Lie algebra of the Galois group of that extension. And presumably there are versions of, there are versions of this where you may have, take larger Galois extensions and you would have more sen operators. But yeah, I, I don't think this, is, this has been worked out in this setting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, E should also be like irreducible as a vector bundle. Uh, so sorry, sure, irreducible as a vector bundle on XK infinity. But I, I don't really even have to use the, any of that. Somehow, m m the source of problems is the action of the sen operator, right? And we here we prove that it acts essentially by a scalar, which we can twist off. Yeah. So yeah, in this limit, you can like add, uh, so add that E is true irreducible. 